sometimes just find it super entertaining because like sometimes like 11 year olds getting yelled at by their mom or something like you can get some really really good stuff uh playing cod these are really fun rosters i need to pay more attention to cod oh my god it's not often that you get a chance to have an extended conversation with somebody that's been on the world's finals analyst desk somebody that watches every single region of league of legends and spend the majority of that time talking about Call of Duty. This is gonna be a little bit of a different interview with Emily Rand than you might be used to. For my LCS fans, there's a little bit in there, but do me a favor. We are on the road to 3,000 subscribers, and I know the majority of people that watch this content are not currently subscribed, so be sure to drop a like on your way down there, do so, and let me know in the comments, who do you think is winning Call of Duty champs? Emily's predictions at the end. How's it going? I'm sorry, I'm shorter than I feel like every other person you probably have on. No, you're fine. Yawn would lift, I don't know if it's a, a laptop or what you guys are using, but the entire interview, he would like adjust the screen the entire, like he was moving it up and down, almost as if he was playing. It was hilarious. Uh, yeah, it's just a laptop screen. Yeah, he was. I just figure I am just unfortunately only five feet tall. Yeah, so. you're good. How's everything going? How's media day treating you guys? Uh, I mean, this is the first meeting I've done. We've oh. just had interviews all day, so or not interviews. Uh, we've had meetings all day, so. Oh, okay. So you so you were pretty much living office life today, for the most part. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Getting fun. uh, doing some, some pitch ideas, some storyline meeting. Yeah, just stuff like that. What's the day to day like? Like, I I know you've talked about it a little bit, but like, can you lay out like just a normal nine to five of like what it's like to work on the LCS broadcast? Do you want what it's like to work on the LCS broadcast or my? You could do both. Screw <laughs> because, it. Because like I, I feel like uh, so we have uh like production meetings uh once a week to prep for storylines and stuff like that, and then obviously on show days, you come in, you have like the last story meeting, you go to usually like hair and makeup uh, and like essentially do more prep until matches. Yeah. Um. For me, my schedule is kind of weird because I also just try to watch as much <laughs> League of Legends as possible to the detriment of my health. So, um, but I love doing it and hopefully that comes across. But like, so I have a really cursed schedule where like if I don't have meetings during the day, I'm on the schedule of like rotating naps because I'm trying to stay up and watch LPL and LCK. Um, Right now it's only LPL, so it actually makes things easier, right? Because I don't have to like go back and watch VODs where the things overlap, but yeah. So cumulative per week, because I think asking per day is a trap question. Per week, how much sleep do you get? Because in theory, it should be what? Seven hours or six hours worst case scenario times seven. So it should be at least like in the 30s at minimum. I don't even know. I've never bothered to do this. Um, God. Not a lot. <laughs> uh, I mean, the problem is that I've tricked my body that I can operate on very little sleep and not be any uh, any different in terms of personality. Um, so, hmm. I, I feel like I at least get like five hour, four or five hours of sleep a day. Okay. Like I don't need a lot of sleep. So, yeah. That's it's, uh, that's and actually it's not weird bad. and it, it's also sometimes broken up by like okay I'll like nap and then I have something in the morning, um and then I or like another league I want to watch uh and then I take a nap when I can yeah we'll talk about league later but because I I know you could talk about it for hours but there's one esport that I know better than most in the space that I've been dying to mm -hmm. talk to you about which is Call of Duty yeah. What? Yeah, that's actually why I accepted this interview. I was like, oh, he wants to talk about like Call of Duty or like the differences between League Esports and Call yes. of Duty. Like I'm there. How yeah. much do you, what's your background in Call of Duty? How long you've been watching? Like, give me the TLDR. Uh, so basically, um, I, they needed someone in 2019. So before the actual like Call of Duty League started and it was like CWL, CWL before. CWL days, yeah. Um, so they were like, we need someone to cover COD. And me just being like kind of a casual, like super, super casual COD player. I was like, I like COD, I'll co cover it. Um, and it turned out that the community itself was like actually like really, really welcoming. It's a very cool esport to cover. Um, it's a very entertaining esport to cover. Yeah. Uh, it's also a little bit niche, I guess, in that like I don't think it's, it's, in my opinion, kind of 
grown as much as it's going to, which isn't to say that they don't have new people churning in because they still do. But like, it's not going to blow up, I think, beyond no. like what what it has been. Um, so uh, it makes it kind of a very cool. It gives it like a very cool community aspect and vibe. Uh, and I was really like pleasantly surprised because because like if you played cod you know your experience is like actually playing it yeah. and like you get some really cursed stuff said in voice comms right so um and, and like i i sometimes just find it super entertaining because like sometimes like 11 year olds getting yelled at by their mom or something like you can get some really really good stuff uh playing cod but anyway yeah that's how i ended up starting covering it and then yeah, I just really liked it. Uh, the community was actually really welcoming to me uh, and very nice. And anytime I was just really upfront, I was like, hey, I haven't covered this before. Like, what is, what is going on here, here, and here? And yeah, everyone was really nice. The players are also, I don't think more media trained is the right way to say it, but no, like- they, they definitely are. So the Optic Bootcamp yeah. is a very real thing <laughs> that like all of them are- you can just yeah. tell, like, they're all, nat like, for the most part, at least the top tier of pros, they are so natural on camera. Yeah, it's, and I think, um, I was, I was actually talking to a friend of mine as to, like, who's, like, really into COD about why this might be. Um, and he actually brought up a really good point that if you are an up-and-coming COD pro, which I think is a big difference between League of Legends pros, like, if you're a really good LOL pro, someone will recognize you on the ladder, like, sight unseen, because they will play against you um, in solo queue, or they'll just see that you're very high elo, and they'll be like, oh, we'll, we'll try it out. But like COD for so long, the players have to do so much just to keep the eSport like going, and they have to communicate with each other a lot. And so like, if you're trying to sell yourself, you can't be like really awful to other yeah. people. All the, you know what I mean? Like you have to be like, yo, let me in on your fours or fives. Like I promise I'm really good. I can do X, Y, Z. Like you kind of have to sell yourself more, I think, um, which is a very different vibe because I feel like in league, your solo queue stats can, to some extent, sell you enough to like get a team to look at you, if yeah. that makes sense. I mean, it also helps. League rank play has been a thing for a long time. Ranked play <laughs> in Call of Duty did not fully, I mean, we got it. The first time we had it, I think was Black Ops 2 was probably the most famous. Then it yeah. regressed. Like it, we were at like a seven out of ten. Then we dropped down to a three. And then we stayed at a three for like four or five years. And then finally picked back up. And now we're finally like at the point where you can probably use the leaderboard if somebody's not hacking to yeah, get maybe, to tell. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah there's, there's still like caveats to it though. I think which is the big difference. Yeah. yeah. So do you have a favorite team or player? Um, hmm, not off the top of my head. But I'll say when I first, uh, so like my first ever interview, like series thing, uh, 100 Thieves won the CWL champs, I think that year. Yep. Um, and Kenny was just such a great player to, to talk to. And like, I don't know, he was just so nice. He was really welcoming. It was unused to some of the experiences I'd had with league pros I didn't know. Um, and even though I obviously did not know that much about the esport, um, it was just a really easy going interview. So like, I'll always be really grateful to him for that. So I've kind of always rooted for him in his career. But um, other than that, I didn't really have like a ton of like super, super, super favorite. I just kind of followed like the overall storylines and stuff. So Kenny actually just did a so Op Optic specifically does a podcast that they do mm -hmm. every week. And he was just on there talking for a good 40 minutes about League specifically. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's he, so they, fun. They brought I'll up to check it out. the Hall of Faker or Hall of Legends news dropped. And immediately you just saw his eyes like light up. He's like a chance to talk about League. And he goes for 40 minutes and walks all the Optic guys through the opening ceremonies, the partnerships, the players. He mixed up Gen G and um, and one of the other team, or I forget who he was. He was mixing them up with like FPX, uh, and it was a little. It was funny to like if you're in the Noah League, you know where he like yeah. messed up a little bit. But like they didn't know any better, so they're just like they're losing their minds over everything <laughs> as he's explaining league culture and like league. That's so cool. To him. It was great. 
Yeah, uh, that's really fun. I'll have to check it out. It's uh, amazing. But what, I guess to the meat of the question then, what do you think is one thing we should learn from Call of Duty specifically? Like what is one thing that they do so much better than we do that we could just take a note from? Um, I think, and this obviously doesn't apply to every region because I highlight CB lol as a region where I see this a lot in as well. But like, and League is a different game. So the nature of League of Le Legends as a MOBA makes it a little bit more difficult because you don't have like really similar like high points and then like a stop down where you actually get to pop off. I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. Yep. But basically, um, like it is so fun to be at a COD event. Like there's so much beef. There's like beef upon beef um, that you can go back like years and years and years between players. And so you just have players who like really, really want to beat each other. And I know we do have that in League, right? Like and, and not even in a like really aggressive way, just in a like I've met this guy um you know i want to beat him really really badly uh and we rarely get that side of players actually being like more open and honest about it i think part of the reason is because a lot of times as we see uh you you get shouted down in social media i guess just because there isn't that same expectation from the league fan community um but there's it's actually so much fun to see cod players just like yelling at each other yelling at fans in the audience fans yep. yelling back like it's a really cool organic um way that people are just participating in sport and like it's the most traditional sports vibe that i've ever had has been at cod events and i don't think league of legends has to be like traditional sports but in terms of that kind of fan to player and then player to player uh interaction and like energy um cod events are really really good for that and i wish we saw it more in league you do again i'll shout out cb lol you do see it from some of their players especially when they have like a really good play they'll get up they'll start yelling at their opponents or like yelling at the crowd uh and those are always really fun moments too you see it in valorant as well um i think part of it is again because league of legends uh is a game that's so long and while it has like high and low points in the game. There aren't a lot of times where you can stand up and actually like take your hands off your mouse and keyboard and yeah. and like really, really have a moment to pop off. We did see Sniper do a little bit of that last yeah. play, which made, made my COD fan like inner, inner bits <laughs> happy a lot just to see him like even, it doesn't have to be much. Cause like, like you said, it's drastically different. There's not these moments where like, and cod you wipe four people you got like three yeah. seconds if you want to like stand up and yell you can but like in league you got to be focusing on the next thing but like even the subtle like knowing that there's a camera on you looking at the camera and then just doing something to it and like as a way to nod to fans of like yeah you just saw the shit that i did like it, it was nice yeah. wasn't it like that's the, I, the I mewing that from sniper was great <laughs> yes one of the one of the fan you mentioned the fan moments of like fans chirping back to players that I got to be a part of, which I wish I could experience in league, was the New York Major last year. Uh, the Minnesota Rocker were chirping the hometown New York team, uh, and they went down. They went up 2-0, and then ended up getting reverse swept. And from that point on, there was one particular player who now is an amazing guy, uh, Standy that okay. he he got it and fans were not happy it did not matter who he was playing and unfortunately for him he was playing against optic the next time he went up the entire crowd is chanting loud enough for it to be very clear on the mics on uh, the stream fuck you standy the entire <laughs> time i didn't realize it i was sitting behind his mother while chanting that Nice. Somebody told me afterwards and like I I said something to her and I was like hey sorry it's just sport it's in the moment she's like hey I get it it's sports it's completely fine like what he does and like the reaction that comes from it as long as it you know as long as when it's all done we can all split a beer afterwards which the cod community's generally good at doing yeah. like that's that's fine by me and I was like that's where is that in league like we have those two week cage or two weeks of cage matches like somebody get up and start cussing somebody <laughs> out. Like it won't be picked up on broadcast, but just like let them have it. Yeah. 
are you uh, kind of switching it back to the league? a little bit but like are you excited for the best of three change are you excited for some of the format changes and things that are going to be coming up the split so i am always a best of uh enjoyer i don't like single games whatsoever uh for a lot of reasons obviously i do have to acquiesce that if you play enough of them you will still get pretty appropriate seating for playoffs which is what a regular season is supposed to do right um but I definitely think, uh, I know there was a pretty vocal push to best of threes, uh, especially since we currently only have eight teams. So um, I know players obviously want it, they want to play as many games uh, as possible, pretty much. So um, I like best of threes. I actually still think best of twos are fine, but I understand oh. the, yeah, I understand the hatred behind it because everyone's like, it doesn't like, you know, it doesn't give you a solid conclusion if it's one, one. Um, so I really enjoy best of threes. I think they offer, uh, I think any best of right offers so much in terms of actual storytelling through the game itself. Right. Uh, beginning with draft, but then also what actually happens in the game and like how a game goes uh, and how that can progress and change throughout even a best of three. And then obviously, especially best of fives, I think is something really cool. Uh, so in terms of me as an analyst, I hope I can bring those kind of stories in now that we can tell kind of a small story about teams within uh, a best of three, as opposed to immediately moving on to the next two teams that are playing. What is one of the minor headlines that you think is not going to get the attention it might deserve, but it should? I mean, I was surprised because like, I guess people I follow know about Tomio and, and his kind of like come up through and how he actually was on Shopify uh, last split. Like I would see him a lot uh, behind the scenes, like with the team and stuff, but obviously he didn't start. Um, I was surprised to learn that people didn't know he'd been promoted, which kind of made yeah. me sad. So yeah, I, I saw like a, a couple of people who weren't like aware until it was brought up elsewhere. Um, so maybe that hasn't been as highly publicized because I know like a lot of people are either excited or denigrating Dignitas's roster decisions. Um, they're really excited about Thanatos. Uh, and so compared to those two stories, I think uh, maybe Tomio has flown under the radar by contrast. But I think not only is he kind of a cool jungler on this current jungle meta where the XP changes have allowed for like more farming jungler so i'm really curious to see him in this meta but also he is just a really funny like hilarious person and i can't wait for people to see his personality because i think he sells himself really well like he doesn't even mean to but he is just a very like funny like effervescent hilarious outgoing person um so Hopefully we'll be able to use him a lot for content too, because he he is really, really fun. I always enjoyed seeing him in uh, NACL stuff. Um, I've enjoyed seeing him in the Shopify stuff that they did, like him in Insanity in Korea and him in Turtle doing that cursed shopping yeah. thing where they had to make a meal. That was really funny. Um, so if you want a good gauge of his personality, like you can check those out too. But I'm really excited to not only see him play, but like actually do content with him because he's a really funny guy. Final predictions I'll get for you because I've already taken up a lot of your time and I know you got ourselves to get to. Uh, who are going to be the three teams that we are sending to Worlds and what team is winning COD champs? Oh, God. I don't know. I haven't paid attention to COD at all this year. Um, oh, you're missing out. Yeah, let me look because I haven't even watched it. Usually I like pull it up passively, right? So when this is going to sound really weird. When we were on weekdays, Yep. It wasn't great for the LCS, but it was great for me being able to watch other esports sometimes passively. Uh, and COD was one of them. Let me pull up and I'll just like yeet out a guest based on rosters. Um, but until then, I I still fully expect TL uh, to make it. I, I really hope they do because I just enjoy watching this team. And I think the progress they've made as a unit is really like demonstrable through their actual gameplay which is very very cool to watch um i feel like the boring answer is probably 
I think C9 should make it. Um, I'm actually not sure how much Thanatos is actually going to change their play style, but I think, again, with the way that the meta could shift, it could be really favorable for C9, specifically for Blabber, if it, these farming kind of carry junglers come back in, in meta. Um, third one is super tough, because uh, I'm not sure how FlyQuest will pan out and I'm not sure how NR if NRG or 100 Thieves will be able to like punch into that. And then I have no idea where Dignitas are going to land. So I'll just do the boring answer and I'll say FlyQuest. Because that's my, my, yeah, see, that's my, uh, that's my thing. But like, I'll stick because I'll stay really consistent, right? As, and it's a, it's a flaw, but it makes me stable. Uh, is that I'll always default to like the most, likely answer based on what i've seen in the past um I mean, and i te think technically the most likely answer is that FlyQuest will fall off because one of the teams that does well in spring always has that summer burnout that kicks in at some point and FlyQuest is technically the most likely culprit given the early stumbles true i think that the big thing is i don't believe i have to believe more in dig nrg uh, nrg could do it 100 Thieves would be really fun just because, again, I like the team a lot. Uh, I like their team dynamic a lot, and I like their players. Um, but they'd have to get it together enough to actually make a deep playoff run, yeah. which would be interesting to see, but I am not sure if it will happen. I got a one minute warning, so I just got to wrap up with the. All right, the who God who are the. Yeah, who are the team? Because I don't even know who is good this year. The top three almost unanimously are uh, the Toronto Ultra, the Atlanta phase, which is still most of the time. Yeah, terrors, obviously. Yeah. And then, oh, you went great on my side. Uh, and then oh, Op no. Optic and New they, York. They cut me off or, oh no, it's just, uh, you're going to have to cut this part out of your interview because I'm nah, wasting you're, your time. You're fine. If anything, I'm the one that's getting you in trouble. Okay. So phase is a BZ Celium. Yeah. Uh, Classic Sim, or sorry, Draws is in there. Uh, who's our coach? I think Classic is the coach. Uh, Optic. Yeah, Draws. Okay. Optic uh, is. Optic is Kenny, Dashy. Uh, why am I? Pred. Pred. Shotzi. Shotzi, yeah. Yeah. And then and the then... subliners still have Kismet. That's uh, Hydra, Kismet, Sib, and Skies. And then Toronto, who have been pretty good all year that's uh kleenex envoy insight and scrap Ooh, these are really fun rosters i need to pay more attention to cod oh my god um champs is going to be great and it's in op it's in texas too so it's in optics backyard it is going to be oh nice. that'll be really fun all right well this is completely based on not seeing anything Wait, Karma's coaching Optic? Yeah, he's now the coach for Optic. See, now I have to go for Optic. I don't want to be an Optic homer. Uh, I... nah, you're welcome. <laughs> welcome to the fan. Welcome to the green wall. Uh, yeah, I'll just... I I want to root for Kenny, uh, so I guess I'll go Optic. Yeah. Having seen no games, so do not take this as any sort of analysis it whatsoever. It will entirely be taken as fact 100% without <laughs> question. Right. Awesome. I'm going to get yelled at by Ryan, so I got to let you go. Thank you so no, much for No, thank your you time. so much. It was a fun time. All right, see you. See ya.